hey guys, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel yet again, where sometimes magically amazing people like Kate Winslet appear next to me. It's a, it's a, it's a miracle, Kate. We were both just saying our stomachs are going to grumble, and mine just did as you were saying that. Like. <laughs> Perfect. There will be much stomach grumbling to come. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and enjoy my chat with the one and only Kate Winslet. Kate, uh, whether you know it or not, you've been on the bucket list for a while for this podcast. We've been Aww. doing it for about eight years. So thank you for the time today. Oh, thank you. That's really lovely. Thank I've been you. I've been having a bit of a um, Kate Winslet a thon the last few days. In the span of seventy two hours, I've seen Avatar: The Way of Water, I Am Ruth, and The Holiday on the Plane Over. So, <laughs> <laughs> I have you contain multitudes, Kate. That's, Mo actually, Kate <laughs> that's actually a fairly good. Uh, spread and, and, and balance, I'd say. Yeah. Like, if you could have, like, you know, a, 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 an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert <laughs> of is, my career. Which is which? Which is which? I guess holiday's the dessert. It it's has, got that's to the, be. That, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, wait. Maybe, the, maybe the entree... Well, the entree I am It Ruth. seems weird to say either of them is, like, an amuse-bouche uh, uh, like appetizer. They're both feasts yeah, in their are. own way. Yes, they are. <laughs> um, how would you schedule the, yeah, the Kate Winslet movie a thon the uh, I, I guess that is I mean it, 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 it must strike you as you get to have these kind of conversations where you have an opportunity to look back to see the breadth of the work it must please you you've been doing this for 30 years on the big screen almost it's yeah, kind of crazy I, I know it's a it is a 30-year career and actually I keep having moments where at the at this time in my life where I, I, I realize oh I'm I'm one of those older actors now who I used to listen to and hear their stories when I was younger and they would say, oh, do you remember back in, you know, yeah. 1970 or whatever? Yeah. And, uh, and we did that show with blah, blah, blah. And, and I, I am now doing that. And actually, jo I worked with Josh O'Connor recently, who's gorgeous, I absolutely adore him, he's such a wonderful actor. And he said to me, he said, so who were your contemporaries, Kate, when you were starting out? And I thought, God, wow, wow, Josh O'Connor yeah. is asking me something that really does feel like it's before his time. And it is before his time. And yeah, I suppose I just feel, I just feel honestly filled with so much gratitude that not only do I get to do the thing that I love, but I get to do so many different versions of it. Yes. And, and I feel proudest of that. You know, often people say to me, so what's your ultimate goal? Or what's a role you'd love to play? Or what's left? You know, you seem to have done it all. And I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm right in the weeds of the best part now where yeah. I'm getting to experience playing all these different roles across kind of loads of different mediums. And it's just amazing. That, to me, is the ultimate goal, is that I can just float around. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just looking at recent work, I mean, from Mayor of Easttown to Performance Capture and Avatar, it's like couldn't be more different and stuff you've never done in your career before. And that's that must keep it so exciting. Mm. Um, well, let's start. Okay, we're going to dive into Avatar, obviously, which is why I'm in London visiting with you. But I do want to mention I Am Ruth, which in the States, sadly, we don't have a release date yet, but I'm sure it's coming sometime soon. I hope so. Um, it must be, I mean, talk about full circle moments. You're working with your daughter here. Mm. It's essentially like, almost like a two-hander, mm. like you and your daughter. Mm. She, by my math, was probably filmed this when you, around the time when you were filming uh, at that age, Titanic, which is just mind-boggling. But you know what's really crazy? At the age that she was when we shot this, it was only like nine months ago, so she was 21, yeah. like 21 and a half. And actually, I was just done shooting Titanic at that age and had been nominated right. for Best Supporting Actress for Sense and Sensibility at that point, which is crazy. So I'm constantly saying to young actors, that's like the ridiculous version. Yeah. Like, don't, don't aspire to that. That's just like a freak, random, fortunate thing that happened to me <laughs> a long, long time ago. Um, it's like every poor director I talk to that always compares themselves to like uh, Orson Welles, who did Citizen Kane <laughs> when he was 25. It's like... yeah. Freak of nature in the greatest possible way. You, with all due respect, freak of nature in the best possible way. <laughs> no, I just, but I have had some very fortunate moments, you know, and of course people say, you know, you make your own luck and, and I've certainly worked incredibly hard and continue to just because I don't want to ever be shit. And it's a good motivator. You, but is, if you take your foot off the gas, then things start to go a little wiggly. And so I just, I just refuse to ever do that. But no, I look at my daughter and, you know, I do see... Well, for a start, she there are moments where you know she does things with her face, and I'm like, huh, that's a that's a me thing. And I I, I see her in certain angles, and I'm yeah. like, oh, wow, 
You, do, you know, you do see, she looks very different to me. She is her own person. Of she's course. completely different. She's much shorter than me. Physically, we're constructed in totally different ways. And emotionally, obviously, she's got her own full on thing going on. But <laughs> sometimes I'm like, oh God, my face was like that in Sense and Sensibility or my face was like that in Titanic. So it's really fun to kind of spot those things. But she's, she's a very, very powerful young actor and I'm enormously proud of her and it was so impressive watching what she did every day in I Am Ruth because not only are we improvising the entire thing, it's no scripted dialogue, we made it all up on the day as we were going along. So that takes a huge amount of courage, yeah. um, but she had to be very vulnerable and really just let go of any inhibition and, 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 and put herself out there. And it's it's really hard as a young actor to be laid so bare like that when you've only had three years worth of experience acting in front of a camera. Not to mention she knows she's going to be compared to you. She is in the same frame as you. <laughs> like, I yeah, mean, that's... I guess, I mean, it's sort of inevitable, I suppose, that people will do that, which is kind of a little niggly because she oh, does have her own you know it's unfair in every respect yeah, of course and but she she she, she truly yeah she truly has her own style i mean i have to say she is very different to me um as a young actor she she has a sort of um a, a, there's, a, there's a naturalism to her work that I feel I honestly never had when I was younger. It took me years to figure out how to just be very real on camera. Mm. I feel like I'm still figuring that out. But she sort of has that um, quite instinctively. And I think a lot of young actors of her generation are, are, are served quite well with that style right. um, in a way. I think that society... Uh, has shifted and changed so much since I was younger that we want to hear what younger actors have to say. Yes, authenticity and, is yeah. valued over anything else. Yeah, 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 yeah. It really is. Let's talk about full circle moments. Let, let's. Uh, this this um, press tour gives me the opportunity to talk about this 25 plus year collaboration with James Cameron on and off. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, it's been some time since Titanic, but Titanic, it, it, I mean, look, you and I both lived through it in different respects, but I remember as a teenager, like it was, as you well know, a phenomenon beyond phenomena. It's, it's hard to contextualize for people today what yeah. it was. Yeah. What's been your relationship in the subsequent years? Like, have there been times where you've been like, I don't want to talk about Titanic today. Like, I don't need, I, I appreciate it, I love it, it did so much for me, but like, I need a year off, I need a week off, I need a day off from Titanic. You know, I have loads of moments off from Titanic. Um, genuinely, I do. I think, you know, it isn't this sort of thumping great presence in my life on a daily basis. No. Not at all. Um, and actually, if anything, I think now that I have moved through that time and come out the other side and have been able to prove to people that there are lots of other things that I could do. Right. Um, and also making choices that were, you know, quite deliberate for a few years in terms of going against what was expected of me, I think. You know, I was never a very good famous person. I wasn't ready to be a famous person. Right. And somehow I was so fortunate because I, I instinctively knew that at the time and resisted it. It was really scary. Yeah. You know, it was very scary to become that famous that quickly all of a sudden. And truly, my life went from being able to just roam around, makeup free, go and buy, you know, a pint of milk in the newspaper and a loaf of bread from across the road to suddenly that was an abnormal activity yeah. because I was literally surrounded by press just walking across the street. And I was so young, you know, so experiencing life as an independent adult, you know, learning who I was as an actor. I mean, my God, I still had so much to learn. I was not trained. It's a common misconception about people. People think right. that I had all this years of heavy, you know, I don't know, important British training. I left school at 16 and, and, and got lucky. So I, I have learned on the job and continue to learn on the job. So actually when I did Titanic, I just walked out of that feeling kind of overwhelmed and and curious about you know what would come next yeah. and and actually what did come next was not what i expected at all it's quite overwhelming but now i think being a young famous person is 
almost impossible to navigate. Well, just think about it. I mean, you've been very frank, and it's kind of uh, great to hear, I think, especially for young people to hear how you were treated in the wake of Titanic and the, and the bullying mm -hmm. and the way you were described in the, in the press. But mm -hmm. yes, add in the way of social media. Could you imagine like how difficult no. it would have been for you to no, deal I with could. all of that? I, I, just, I just absolutely couldn't imagine it. I mean, it's a whole other world, and I'm so lucky I, I don't have social media. I literally... Yeah. It's not a case of having to switch it off because I never even switched it on. Probably the smartest decision you've ever made. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I just don't know about any of that. Yeah. I just don't have to hear any of it. And I think as a young actor, when you know every actor is insecure. I don't know a single actor, mm -hmm. no matter how old they are, how many years they've been doing it. I don't know one single actor who says, "Yes, I like myself. I'm impressed by the things I do, and this is me." Every single actor is like, oh God, was I good enough? Did I, was I, should I have done that differently? Right. Or maybe, oh God, I wish I could do it again. It's just, it's just how we are. We're kind of just hotwired to think we're not very good <laughs> half the time. Well, when you're rejected in auditions 90% of the time, that doesn't help reinforce. Well, that's it. The, I mean, yeah. so much of rejection, so much of acting is rejection, especially when you're young and starting out. And that's the hard part, is yeah. having the resilience to push through and, you know, decide whether you love it enough to keep getting the knockbacks and just keep going forward. It's, it's, it's really hard. Do you remember vividly still the audition process? I know you've talked about before, like, you never ironically auditioned with Leo, you did with McConaughey. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, like, because there's so many names that have been talked about. Like, do you remember, like, was Christian Bale, was Ethan Hawke? Do you remember other people that you... Christian and Ethan, no. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, yeah. And there was another actor who, I have to say, is not that in well that, known the now. Much, yeah. mm. um, uh, I'm afraid I can't remember That's okay, name. that's okay. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? But, yeah, I... And were you were were you aware of who you were up against? Because there was talk of Gwyneth and Claire Danes, etc. Um, I wasn't really aware, but this it was a little bit naughty actually. I do remember this, and it was such a lesson. My God! So I, this other actor that I did read with whose name I'm afraid I really well, can't is it remember. Maybe um, I'm going to throw one out. We can always cut it. Uh, um, Jeremy Sisto was he also? Because I heard he was one of the ones that was. It might have close. been him. Okay. It might have been him. Okay. But I can't recall, no to be honest. So it's a really long time ago. Yeah. Um, but I remember him, he, whoever it was, very much wanted to let me know that he had been there doing this auditioning thing the whole of the day before and absolutely threw out a couple of names of people who he had been oh, auditioning with. like a psychological thing? In camera trying? that he was completely trying to fuck me up. And I just went, mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. And I don't know, I just... I just took from that, wow, I'll never do that yeah, to another actor. Games, I will never, ever do that to another actor. What is the point? But I also thought, you're not going to get this part. <laughs> I could just tell. He was just way too, um, he was just way too pleased with himself. Yeah. And Jim Cameron, I, I could sense, was not a person who was going to be very tolerant of any young actor who had any degree of arrogance. Right. I could tell that about Jim. He's a really sincere person. And he was looking for actors who weren't vain, weren't going to do mind games, and who were going to be absolutely in it and yeah. immersed, <laughs> literally. Um, and yeah, I do remember the process. And I had been flown to LA. I had been flown to LA to do proper screen test stuff um, with costumes and everything. And I was filming Hamlet at the time with Kenneth Branagh. And what was amazing about it was that the entire cast of Hamlet, so I'm talking Julie Christie, oh, it was the craziest Derek cast Jacobi, ever. ridiculous, <laughs> like Jack Lemmon, Charlton Heston. I mean, it was absurd, yes. not to mention Ken, of course. But they were all in on this thing, like, oh God, Kate's up for this really big film and it's gonna be so exciting. So I had all of them literally going, bye darling, good luck, you've got this, you can do it. And honestly, the day I got the phone call, this is a crazy story. I've hardly ever told this, but this is honestly true. We were filming at Shepperton Studios, which is a little ways out of central London, and I was living in a, in a flat share in North London at the time. So the journey is hefty each right. way, depending on traffic. Julie Christie said to me, listen, I found a little bed and breakfast round the corner, and, um, and I think they've got a spare room. So if you wanted to kind of buddy up with me, or I can ask the people who own it if there's a, a, a space for you. On the occasion that I received the phone call telling me I had got the part in Titanic, I was in a bedroom in this bed and breakfast next door to Julie Christie. <laughs> I received the phone call in the morning at 5 a.m. or something, and I banged on the door, 
banged on through the wall, Julie, Julie, wake up, I got the part, I got the fucking part. Oh, God, darling. And then she threw open the door and there's the two of us standing in our pyjamas, me, 19 years old, with Julie Christie. Yeah. She's the first person I told that I'd gotten the part. <laughs> I mean, if I ever did do a memoir one day, which I don't think I would actually, but that's got to go in. Like that's, that has to, that's got to go in there somewhere. A pinch me moment, amazing. Oh my God. When you think of, of and I promise it's not going to be the entire Titanic talk, but. But do you see how yeah. I'm like, I'm so old now, I'm able to tell the stories about. This is the good stuff <laughs> The days this of my acting great. youth. Isn't it hilarious? <laughs> All right, guys, let's talk about security, specifically VPNs. Our sponsor this week is NordVPN. By now, I hope you guys know what a VPN is. It's, of course, a virtual private network. It's a service that protects your internet connection and privacy online. It creates an encrypted tunnel for your data, protects your online identity by hiding your IP address and allows you to use public Wi-Fi hotspots safely. So NordVPN is the one to use because it's so easy to use. You connect with one click or even enable auto-connect for zero-click protection. Plus, they've got over 5,200 servers in 59 countries. It's got amazing speeds. It's actually been confirmed by speed test. NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there. You can use six devices on it on every major platform. I like it also because you can get movies, streaming, and other content anywhere everywhere. Don't miss your favorite content from home when traveling abroad. It just takes a click. You open the map, you click on a location, and you'll be connected in seconds. It's that easy. You can find services at a lower price, a platform maybe that isn't available in your home country. Simply change your virtual connection. The good news for you guys is we've got an exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash happy sad to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four additional months for free. That's four additional months for free guys it's completely risk-free with nord's 30-day money back guarantee the link of course is in the episode description but go over to nordvpn.com slash happy sad and remember to get your discount now jim gets a bad rap with i feel like his dialogue he's a very like earnest hard on his sleeve filmmaker and that's kind of why the movies work they're emotional like mm. people talk about the technology and the mm. action and the drama you cry at James Cameron movies. We're gonna talk mm. about this one. I cried at this one. I've cried at Titanic every time I've seen it. Um, I'm curious though from an acting perspective, like on Titanic, there's some dialogue in there that's tough, that would be tough for an actor to sell. Like, you know. I, I can't even remember. But Is like, it? I mean, well, I mean, it's, I don't know. Just like, I mean, obviously for Leo, it's like I'm king of the world. But then for you, it's like, you know, to say like I'm flying in a way that like feels like it's from your heart and it's not, I don't know, cheesy beyond Yo, belief. Listen, dude, my, <laughs> my motto has always been commit or it's shit. Right. You know, like truly, I'm, that's, you know, I should copyright that phrase. You should. Um, <laughs> But so I, it's really funny. I mean, honestly, I was just so excited to, to get the role. Yeah. It was incredible. And it wasn't just that I thought, oh, wow, this is it. And I didn't actually didn't think that at all. I never thought, oh, this is it. This is my big break. A hundred percent, I did not think that. I thought, God, great opportunity. First time playing an American. Yeah. Well, this could mean that people might see that I can be a little bit versatile. Okay, just can't, you know, I, I mustn't blow it. I never even I never even thought about the dialogue. You know, as as actors, it's your job to make it work. Yeah. It really is, and 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 you are there to play a part. You're there to really give your all, and 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 that was that was the main thrust for me. But one thing I will say that is absolutely true of Jim's writing, he creates remarkable female roles. Oh, you know, not just remarkable female roles who are strong and central to the plot. But in the case of Avatar, these women, they are leaders. Yes. They lead with their heart, with integrity. They have the power to protect and create change. You know, this is, they, they are physically not just robust, but resilient and agile and capable. And he is a man, genuinely, and I'm not saying this to kind of dispel any shit that's been said about myself and Jim in the past, but this is really the truth. He has enormous admiration for the ability that women have to plow on, keep going, yes. and to achieve more than perhaps even we ourselves think that we're capable of. And so it's good to be, I think, in a situation where you're working with a director who just, ex not just expects that you'll give it a go, but knows that you will be able to pull off that thing. Yeah. It's kind of amazingly empowering. Yeah, and the, the company, the people he keeps coming back to is very telling, and it's like, once you're mm. in, 
you're in. And yeah. I feel like there's a, a mutual respect thing, even with all the stuff that's been said about, yes, he's he's mellowed a bit over the years and he was who he was and he is who he is. But yeah. it, it comes from a good place, it seems. It does. It comes from a place of wanting to do incredible work. Yeah. And when I think about Titanic, really, my God, I mean, there was so much pressure on him. And at some point, I... You know, you hear rumors, of course. There was no internet in those days, right. and I think there was barely even email, quite honestly. But, but, but I remember hearing that it was getting so expensive. There was some merger with another studio at some point, and we all remember. Th I remember we were all going, "Oh God, this is getting a bit like, yeah. you know, guys, we're in this like full-on like problem film." Oh, there was like Titanic Watch. I remember, like Entertainment Weekly. It was like every month was like, "Let's, where is it now? Is it gonna? Yeah, how much is it see, gonna we, bomb?" Like, see, we would not have ever known any of that. We were just in it, and sure. It was really tough. You know, it was so hard. The water was really cold. Yeah. There was so much of it. It would have cost, you know, a fortune to heat that amount of water. Plus, there are things I will tell you about the way that water behaves in huge volumes that are unpredictable. So we were all scared, quite understandably. There's only so much safety you can put in place yeah. before you dump however many tons of water into a flooding corridor or a dining room. You just don't have any way of knowing what it's really going to do. Right. So, you know, it's at the end of the day, kind of isn't anyone's fault if you get slammed in the side by a floating table. <laughs> we didn't know the table was going to decide to do that. Right, it's that not take. controllable. Yep. Yeah, yep. and it's not just the actors. You know, it's the cr it's the crew, it's the camera guys who are standing around wearing wetsuits, dry suits, you know, lugging pieces of equipment, trying not to get water on the lens. I mean, we were all in it together. I mean, that's the one thing I will say that I treasure from that experience and that it taught me a huge amount about what it is to be part of a company. Right. And... That, to me, is something that I care about a lot. I care about hierarchy in terms of not allowing that to to have any space or place. Um, it's very, very important for morale. It's very important for younger actors to understand that it just doesn't get you anywhere yeah. when you behave like that. I often hear stories of younger actors complaining about silly things like catering and wanting to have a separate chef to other people, and you think, what for? I take my own food to work now because I hate to have to ask people to get me things. So I'm just like, you know what, I'll just take all my own stuff and I can just eat when I need to, you know, have a bathroom break when I need to right. and not be, you know, expecting people to do things. And I can just concentrate on doing a good job or at least focusing on hopefully <laughs> remembering lines and doing all the things I'm supposed to do. You have to stay at it, you know. You can't just rest on your laurels and, you know hope that people are going to go, oh, she's great. You know, one day she might not be. Yeah. You know, that's on me. Yeah. Um, and I, I care about that. I really do care. Okay, we're going we're gonna to return to the water of Avatar, the way of water, but I have one video I want to show you because I've had the privilege... Oh, man, this is quite cool. I've had the privilege over the years of talking to your old buddy... Um, Just newsflash, I actually have no idea what he's about to show me. I have no idea. She has no idea. Um, <laughs> no. Leo. Oh. And um, I, asked him, I asked him the question that you all hate getting asked. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this video. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the he's biggest with movie Brad controversy of all time. Margaret. Could Jack have fit on that door at the end? Of the oh my <laughs> gosh, I thought it. I remember bawling my eyes out when I was I have no a girl. Being <laughs> That's telling, I think. That is the biggest controversy, I what, think. Never. In mm -hmm. modern cinema history. Could you, could you, Leo, could you squeeze her? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. face. No comment. Right? <laughs> Did you mention it at the time? We like, should it's, we make the door smaller? So like I, I said, I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny magic. It's in my it's magic. <laughs> so he, I've never seen him stonewall me or anybody else more on a question. He just shut down completely. Yeah. What's your attitude about that silly question after all these years? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> have to make a joke of it, don't you? I don't fucking know. <laughs> look, that's the answer is that I don't fucking know. Could he have fit on the bloody... Look, all I can tell you is I, I, I do have a decent understanding of water and how it behaves. You okay? more than most, yes. I really do, okay? <laughs> but not just that in my own life. Like, we paddleboard, we surf, we kite surf. I don't actually like kiteboarding as much as my husband does and is extremely good at it. I do windsurf and I really do enjoy that. I scuba dive, we swim, we cold water swim. Like we do a lot in the water. One thing I can honestly tell you, so a paddleboard, so when so a stand-up paddleboard, if you put two adults on a stand-up paddleboard, it becomes immediately extremely unstable. Right. 
Um, that is for sure. If you put two adults and say a seven-year-old on a paddleboard, you can't. It's You can't do anything. Right. You'll be tipping. You'll be falling in the water. So the reality is. It was a door that, is it an intact door? Is it a bit broken? It's a bit broken, isn't it? You were there, why don't you tell me? I can't remember. (laughs) Anyway, I think there's a piece broken up. I have to be honest, right? I actually don't believe that we would have survived if we had both gotten on that door. Okay. I think that he could have fit. Right, but he was already pretty worse for the wear. He was, oh, I see. It would have Mm -hmm. tipped and it would not have been it would not have been a sustainable idea. So you heard it here for the first time. Yes, he could Once have fit. Once and for all. He could have fit on that door, but it would not have stayed afloat. It wouldn't. Now leave Kate and Leo and Jim alone. And also, apparently, I was too fat. Oh, no. <laughs> That's... Isn't it awful? <laughs> Why were they so mean to me? They were so mean. They were so mean. I wasn't even fucking fat. It's insane. It's insane. The I've way- sworn so many times in this interview. I'm so sorry. No, I love it. Uh, no, the way you and, and Leo were treated in different ways, bizarre. But you got your Oscar nomination. He didn't get the nomination. Yeah, you at least got that out of it. Yeah, lucky me. <laughs> I did. I know, it's so weird. But it's funny, isn't it? If I could turn back the clock, I would have used my voice in a completely different way. I would have absolutely... I would have said to journalists, I would have responded. I would have said, don't you dare treat me like this. I'm a young woman. Yeah. My body is changing. I'm figuring it out. I'm deeply insecure. I'm terrified. Don't make this any harder than it already is. Mm-hmm. That's bullying, you know, and actually borderline abusive, I would say. A thousand percent. Um, and now that wouldn't happen. And if it did happen, a young actor would truly respond in exactly the way I just did. Right. But also... You know, there's this nonsense of like commenting on bodies and how women look. It's getting better, but we still, it's not, we've still got such a ways to go. It's so ingrained in a disgusting way you that know, it's also, hard to. Even if an actress looks, even if an actress walks out on a red carpet and happens to look amazing in whatever she's wearing, mm. the fact that people will say, looking, you know, cuts a fine figure, right. looks honed and toned, or that, that dreadful word, svelte, right. don't even say it. We don't say that about the men. It's such an irresponsible thing to do, and it feeds directly into young women aspiring to ideas of perfection that don't exist, aspiring to have bodies that, you know, the press are saying that we have. Yeah. It's for that. It's for one night and one night only that we're in that damn dress. And believe you me, mine comes straight off the second I'm in the car on the way home, and I'm in my pajamas. That is how it is. Like I'm right there eating chips and farting. That's what we do, <laughs> you know? I mean, one of the few things we can do, you can do, and you have been, it's great that you're doing it, is, is just speak to the hypocrisy over and over and over again in a public yeah. forum. and Because it doesn't happen overnight, and you're right, it's changing, as many things are, but it's, yeah. it's slow going. It's it is slow going. Yeah. It is slow going. And, you know, not to kind of do down the red carpet occasions, because they're important, they're fun, and actually... It's so tough in the world right now that I'm sure it's nice for people to see, you know, actors yeah. coming together, yeah. looking all dressed up and what have you. I completely understand that. And it's very much a part of the job. And I do respect it. Um, but, yeah, I just wish there weren't quite so many comments on the physical form of actresses. It's it's why? 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 You know, bodies are bodies. Yeah. Everyone's beautiful, how, however they are and whatever they came with, you know. Um, it still drives me kind of crazy. I definitely think we can we can do better with that stuff. We can. Um, let's talk a little bit about this amazing new work. I got a chance to see Avatar The Wave of Water yesterday. Um, and it delivers. Never doubt Jim, James Cameron people. I keep saying to people, it's like, he. how many times does he have to prove yeah. that he does it better than anyone? He takes his time. Oh, my God. But, but it's okay. But he always it's gets okay. there in the end. He does. Um, and <laughs> it's always got, worth the wait. You, you've got a, a wonderful role in this. Talk to me a little bit about when he comes to you. Is there a script? Is he describing the character? Is he describing, I've got these four potential more movies? Like, what? how does the, the conversation happen on this one? So the exact process on this was... Was, was actually relatively straightforward, I guess, in the sense that I'd seen Jim in uh, 2014. I was given a star on the Walk of Fame. I say that <laughs> quietly because I'm always a bit like, ooh, that's a star thing. Um, 
But Jim very kindly came to that event and spoke. And we'd had a conversation the night before, and he just had said to me things like, what do you want me to say? What do you want me not to say? Kind of right, thing. It was right. so sweet. And at the end of the conversation, he said, so at some point, we need to get you big and blue. And I said, my God, that would be amazing, having loved, obviously, the first Avatar. So that was 2014. And then in 2017, he did call me and say, look, I actually really do want to talk to you about this character. Um, it's a really significant uh, role in terms of the story arc and what we're saying about mothers and protection of family. Um, and he described Renal and he act, his actual words, he said, she's the female goddess warrior leader of the water tribe. So right, in. Tick, tick, <laughs> tick, tick, <laughs> tick, I'm in. Yeah. Um, and I told my children and, you know, who at the time were, I don't know, I guess Mia and Joe would have been, what, 16, 17 and, you know, like 17 and 13. And they were just like, well, you have to do it. And I said, well, you know, they're going to send the script. We're going to read it. They're like, no, you just have to just do yeah, it. You yeah. just have to do it. So, uh, and then, of course, I read the script. And actually, the script was pretty much, I'd say, almost as it was when we then came to shoot. Um, and it was just amazing. It's an interesting uh, challenge. I mean, and exci exciting prospect. This is, by the way, it strikes me that, like, the two arguably most formative filmmakers you worked with early on are like the two biggest proponents of performance capture, Peter Jackson, of course, mm. and Jim. It's just it's just an odd circumstance. But yeah, yeah. Um, this character, like, not a ton of dialogue, actually, but like the physicality is important. And I'm like, you're doing like, you know, you get war cries and hissing and all these kind of like other ways of impacting and conveying emotion that totally works a thousand percent. But I'm curious from an acting perspective, did it feel... I don't know, like a different sort of a challenge? Was it more freeing to, to embrace physicality over dialogue or, or, or what? Well, Jim said to me, look, don't be freaked out by the motion capture thing. He said, because actually that's just, that's just a technical setup, really. Right. So once you're in your motion capture suit and you have your dots all over your face and your helmet cam and your, um, your helmet and your helmet cam, everything rigged and ready to go, you, you, then, you then go through... Uh, you, you get rommed into the system. So mm. you stand in <laughs> they front of... You in your yeah, they do. Into the you computer. stand in front of the camera and, and in front of a camera and you make a, a sequence of something like 20, 26 physical poses and you do the same for the face and then you are caught in the computer system for the day and then you're free to go. So then as actors, there's no hair and makeup, there's no lighting... There's no camera setups, there's no marks to hit. You are completely free. And actually, it's a very sort of pure form right. of acting, partly because you can't hide at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got cameras rigged everywhere in the roof of the soundstage, plus the cameras that you can physically see. Um, not to mention the little GoPro that sits right, right here yeah, yeah, in yeah. front of your face. So. Every movement, in, you know, the, the, the gap between your teeth, the way your eyeballs move, you know, when you close your eyes and you really squeeze and tense your whole face together, everything is captured. And it's a luxury because the subtlety that you can put into these performances is quite surprising. Yeah. You wouldn't imagine that would be the case, but it, it really is. Um, yeah, the close-ups in this film, like, it's like you're just... Yeah, it's it's flawless. Like you're you're seeing a performance like without a, a thousand percent. It's just all there. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, I honestly loved the experience. It's very collaborative. Um, and Zoe in particular, well Zoe and Sam, because they created created these characters and this world. Zoe was very much a part of the um, the invention of the voice and the and and the moves of the Nazi people and how they live and what they think. And so creating a spirit for these characters was something that I was so grateful she had done that and was right there. So yeah. I, she could kind of show me some things and guide me sometimes. And she was so generous and kind. Um, and they're very, um, they're very instinctive as actors, both of them. But Zoe, in particular, she really acts with her whole heart. Yeah. And as Neytiri, that is Neytiri. Right. And so it was very special to be around of, around that because you get really sucked into it. It's extremely inspiring. Looking ahead, not to be greedy, we know you're in the next one. 
Are you in the next, like, four? He's saying now there's definitely, hopefully, going to be four and five. But he, now he's even saying there might be a six and seven. Like, has he told you, how far out has he told you the story? There's only so much I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. But you're ready to go back in the water? with the, all, Already your legend. Jim for... knows that if he asked me to do anything, I'd just do it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's only so much I know, and there's only so much I can I say. understand. I understand. All right, guys, let's talk about our next partner on Happy, Sad, Confused today. It's AG1, a product I've been taking every day because, frankly, I want to feel better. I want a better immune system. I want more energy. And I want to replace all those costly pills and vitamins I've been taking for years. That's where AG1 comes in. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, and probiotics. This is a lifestyle friendly product, guys, whether you're paleo or vegan or dairy free or gluten free, this is the one for you. It contains less than one gram of sugar. It supports better sleep quality and recovery. It supports mental clarity and alertness. Plus the price is right. It's less than your cold brew habit, less than $3 a day. And it's really an investment in an all-in-one nutritional insurance for your body. Plus, I like the company. They're a climate-neutral certified company. In 2020, AG purchased carbon credits that support projects protecting old-growth rainforests. That's important to me. So right now, guys, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash HSC. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash HSC, as in happy, say confused, to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Let's talk just generally a little bit about some other things because it, you've been doing a lot of television in recent years. I mentioned Mare of Easttown, which I was obsessed with, as many were. Um, it strikes me like a lot of like the great films you did back in the day, they probably wouldn't be films now. Mm. Films like Little Children, The Reader, maybe those are Netflix miniseries. Who knows? Who knows if someone funds those movies mm. for a theatrical release? Is that part of why television has been increasingly important in your career? It's just where the material is, where the, the good stories are, or has it been a, a calculated kind of thing? Just give me a sense of how that's evolved. There's nothing that I've ever done that has been calculated, <laughs> apart from the first thing I chose to do after Titanic. That was an actual specific move on my part to take a step back. Right. Um, but you're right. I mean, there aren't as many... Um, arty films being made in the way that, you know, Yes, Little Children, Eternal Sunshine, The Reader. Um, and that is that is a, a shame. It's, it's very, very sad. Um, however, television is extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. And we get to play characters for longer periods of time. Um, and in the case of Mare of Easttown, we have opportunities presented to us that you know may not have existed before if there wasn't as much television content as there is now. It's an amazing time to be a younger actor because there's a lot of work. And, and there's less of the um, snobbishness versus one medium versus the other. You can go back and forth. Back in the day, as you well know, it was like, you don't do TV. You're either a TV actor or a film it's actor. It's funny because I just have never really cared about what people think. Right. So I, I, mean, you were pretty, I mean, Mildred Pierce was pretty early well, in that. Mildred was yeah. 2010, so yeah. it was kind of early on in... I suppose, you know, establishing that trend, right? Um, which was cool. <laughs> I was one of the first. I was a trendsetter. You yeah. mentioned, uh, you, you, you've referenced a couple times kind of the, in the wake of Titanic, making that choice and knowing like you weren't in a place and, and still aren't like embracing celebrity. That's not who you are. That's not the life you want. Mm. Well, in terms of material, like did, what kind of stuff were you getting? Like were you getting interesting material or was it? <sighs> no one's ever really asked me that. Um, I was getting the big stuff. I was, um, definitely. But I have I was raised by two people who taught us how to be happy with very, very little. Right. And so I was never driven by the financial dangled carrot. Um, that was just not a motivator for me. Um, are there any How of those lucky things? Am I? Yeah, no, that's a, that's that a that great luxury. The, yeah. yeah, it can like, screw up the the algorithm totally for you yeah. if you're. 
Yeah. Because, yeah, there, are, there were reports and you can say yes or no or just, you know, opt out. But, like, Shakespeare in Love, Moulin Rouge was talked about. I found a random thing, that, that a random article back in the day that said you were going to be in Phantom Menace, the Star Wars movie. Do you remember anything about that? Mm, I don't remember that, actually. Okay. But the I others, there was some... I remember a few things about okay. the other things. Okay. Fair enough. And, <laughs> and is there, um, just selfishly for Mare, is there a talk of a second season? Where are you guys at in terms of discussing the future for Mare? Oh, okay. Long silence. I honestly, if it's, ha I, I, I just don't know what we'll do. Okay. I just, you know, all I can say is no decision has has been made. Honestly, it really hasn't, and it's a tricky one. You know, being completely honest about. Oh God, here we go. This is going to get quoted and requoted. But being completely honest about how that would evolve. You know. Those are questions that none of us can answer quite yet. Like, how would that evolve? It was, it was so good, and it was way more successful um, and prominent as a piece of television than I think any of us could ever anticipated or hoped for. Right. Um, and we all feel enormously proud of, of what we were able to do. And I'm so proud of all the actors. My God, it was really tough. Um, so the question is, do you know? Do you quit while you're ahead? You know, do you hold your head high and say, look at what we did, I'm so proud of that, yeah. and just walk away? Or do we go for it again? You know, it was a lot for me to play that character, I'm not going to lie. And coming out the other side was frighteningly hard. And, you know, I, it made me realise, oh, my God, if I go to work now, it really hurts. And I have to look after myself. Right because I have a family and I can't, I can't just, you know, do that. Obviously, we all go together. It's not a case of being away for months and months and months on end or anything. But, you know, a lot goes into it. I can't just go, oh, yes, let's just do it again. It's not that kind it's of It's not. Yeah. It's, a, it's a colossal, colossal commitment and, and, and did really take a huge amount out of me. And I know that it would do that again. It would have to if I was going to give people what they want and ultimately deserve to see out of Mare Sheehan. Um, but, you know, you never know. I was going to say, you got the accent still in there, right? <laughs> unfortunately, yes. It's there forever. And I only say unfortunately because it was so ingrained in me that I had a moment recently on, I was <laughs> filming Lee, the film I just wrapped mm. about Lee Miller. And I had a scene, this was really freaky. I had a scene where I had fallen and I had a, I limped for like a couple of scenes after it, like, uh, you know, just kind of loosening up this pain. <laughs> and I had to limp. And of course, episode one and into a bit of episode two, Mare is limping because she had fallen when chasing F Freddie Hanlon, okay? So as I limp... It's coming back, it's just... Into this scene. Yeah. And my, my accent on Lee was, you know, it was a simple, straightforward, much more generic American. I swear to you... I walk into a damp cellar and I walk up to a soldier and I say, with my limp, hey, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? I promise you. And I was like, ah, 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 stop. Okay, please could we do that again? Please could we do that again? Oh my God, I was mad. That was really bad. That's never happened to me before. I was like, ah. it's still in there. And that's like, you know, over two years later from having started shooting Really terrifying. Yeah. Um, this has been a real treat. Honestly, thank you for the time. I know these junkets, they're, they're, they're running you ragged, so I appreciate you making the time for something like this. You're welcome. Um, the movie is extraordinary. All the work is. I can't wait for folks in the U.S. also to see I Am Ruth, to see you and your daughter and your son. Um, thanks again for the time today. This has been awesome. You're welcome. Thank you.